In this video, I'm gonna show you how to frame out a basement perimeter wall. So we started framing our basement out and um, in our last video I showed you how I installed my foam board insulation and some of the horizontal fire stops. So in this video we'll get into more of the process I've been working through um, to frame along with it. So I've sort of incorporated um, the installation of the foam board with the framing as I go rather than sort of holding the, the foam board while it dries and then going back and framing it. So we're all gonna do this in one process. So, uh, so far I've got maybe a third of the basement uh, framed in. I've got my, my door framed in and later on I'll end up pulling this door in so it's flush with the interior wall. And uh, I've got maybe one, two, three, four walls finished. And so in this video what we're gonna do is we're gonna start here and, and go roughly half the wall down, um, laying down our um, pressure treated board, installing our uh, XPS foam board, and then framing out the wall. Uh, so to start, what we're going to need to do is, uh, I'm required by my local code uh, to fire block every 10 feet and in every corner. Uh, so as I start this next wall, I actually need to put a piece of fire blocking material here. And I, went, I went ahead a few minutes ago and added some uh, fire blocking foam in the corner, uh, but the idea is if there's an outlet in this wall, you don't want it to be able to make the turn and come onto the next wall. So the first thing I'll do is add an additional uh, stud in the cavity and then I'll put a piece of fire blocking plywood right here and then I can start my wall this way. So we'll go ahead and, and do that first. Before I start installing the foam board, I need to grind off these washer tabs. Obviously don't do this near anything flammable. Okay, so now with our insulation washers off the wall, our fire blocking up, we can start with our uh, getting our framing rolling. So I've gone ahead and laid down a 16 foot long uh, pressure treated piece of two by four. And you could either strap, uh, snap a string line uh, from one end of the room to the other to set your spacing. Uh, but since we're putting two inch XPS against the wall, I'm just gonna take a scrap piece of XPS. I'm gonna put it against the concrete, okay? And I'm gonna butt my two by four up against the styrofoam board. And that'll set my gap against the wall and that's fine. So now to fasten down the pressure treated lumber, we need to use a ram set. Uh, you could drill out tap cons if you wanted to drill into the into your floor. I think this system's better. So this is basically a gun that shoots a nail into your floor. Um, I bought this used off a friend of mine and uh, I'll show you how it works. So basically this is a ram set gun and it's got a trigger and so you, you, load, you load it with a pressure treated um, it's, a, it's a fastener, it's a nail that's uh, designed to go into pressure treated lumber. And it's got this little plastic rubber thing that goes on the end. So you set it on the end. And then you basically add a, um, a charge, which looks like a bullet. It's a, uh, pretty much a blank. And uh, this goes into the chamber here. Okay, and then you squeeze it together. And I like to check that the, the round has been engaged into the hole properly. Okay, then you put it down. Now it's ready to be depressed against the lumber and, and used. Uh, before I do that, because it's extremely loud, I'm gonna wear safety glasses and hearing protection. Okay, and so I'm gonna come over to my spot. I'm gonna make sure it's firm against the, uh, the board. I'm gonna pick a spot up, do down here to the end. What I'm gonna do is, you may wanna come over here, is to use it, I'm going to depress it with my hand so it's engaged. And with my other hand, I'm going to squeeze the trigger. All right. So that's, that's now secure to the floor. So I can do that. Uh, initially, I'll do that every few feet. Uh, and then once I've framed out the wall completely, 
I can go back and put one in each stud bay if I want or every other stud bay. For now, I just want to set the distance from the wall so I can get my insulation in and then start um, putting in our studs. Uh, so I'm going to go do this and then we'll come back and install our insulation. So to make things go a little more efficient, um, pre-cutting all of my XPS boards to the proper height. So these are eight foot high, but I'm only taking them to the top of the concrete wall. So that's a, a little under uh, 92 inches. So I need to cut off a few inches. Um, the first few times I started cutting these, I, I thought it was a pain. And so um, what I ended up doing is, is making a clear line and then using, I'm just using a regular um, handheld wood saw and I'm gonna turn it the other way. I found this was a little easier and you get a little more control. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw these in here temporarily. It'll allow me to figure out my spacing for uh, the fire stop. And then we'll take them out later and glue them up. All right, so now we had our fitted up our insulation. Uh, it allowed me to figure out where my horizontal fire stop is going to be. It's notched at the top and the bottom. Uh, we discussed that in a previous video. So if you want to see what this is for and how I did this, uh, check uh, the link for the, pre the other video. Uh, this is just in here temporarily, but because it has a notch up top, it allows me to kind of hold the board, the top board in place while I'm installing it. So what we're going to do now is now that we got our bottom plate installed, we know where our fire stops are going to be. We have our insulation all sized and ready to go. Uh, I'm going to install my top plate. And so what I can do with what these fire stop boards, because they have a notch, allow you to do this with one person. Okay, so I cut it to length. This is just a two by. And I'm going to butt it against the fire stop over there. And I'm going to try to slide it in to this groove up here. All right. And I want the front edge of this two by to be flush with my fire stop as close as I can get it. Okay. And so once I get it to where I want it, I can take my nail gun and hit it up. So I'm going to go down to the end and nail it here. Okay. Where it's flush. All right, and now I can walk down the line and pull it in and actually go down to the other side here, pull it in and flush it up. All right, so with my top plate installed, now what I can do is actually glue and install my insulation permanently. And as I go, I'll start installing um, my studs from the top plate to the bottom plate. And we'll, we'll work to about here, and then we'll be done for the day. So I'm using a foam board insulation glue. I got this at Home Depot. You have to use glue that's rated for XPS foam board or it'll damage your foam board. So with the glue on, before this sets, this isn't going to want to stick to the walls we, we showed in a previous video. So what I'm going to do is just measure my gap between my top plate, or my top plate and my pressure treated board and, and then just put them every 16 inches. Uh, so let's go ahead and get that started. As we do that, that'll retain this against the wall. So this is my miter saw stand. I have free plans for this uh, stand on my website, ourhomefromscratch.com. 
Uh, I find it's really useful to use an upright stand for this so you're not resting your saw on the floor and bending over constantly. Uh, it makes your work life just a lot easier. All right, so before we install the first board, uh, what you need to do for every board to make sure your wall is nice and straight is to figure out what side of the board is, is curved in or out. That's so what I'd like to do is once I have it cut to length, I put it on the floor and I see if it wobbles back and forth. Okay, so I'll try one side and I'll try the other. So this side has a wobble, okay? This side doesn't. All right, so we're gonna put the wobble out. This is my really quick process for installing these studs. So I already cut them to length and every 16 inches uh, I marked where the, the outside and the inside of, of the one and a half inch mark. So I, I marked the center of the stud and the outsides of it so I know where this goes. And what I basically do, I don't mark the top. So I just line this up with my mark, okay, get it situated in there and I'm going to pin the bottom and you can actually do the whole way if you want and then come back and level them off. But this is what we'll do. So I'll take my nail gun, nail it in, and then what I can do is come back with the level, come back with the level, I'll come back on the stand. Level it off. And then good. Okay, it's easier than marking the top and the bottom. Just go off one of your studs, mark 16 every, uh, every 16 and you're good to go. So now the insulation's nice and flush against the back. All these boards have the same bow, if any at all, and you just go down the wall like that. All right, so we finished framing up until the end of the last piece of insulation. So now it's uh, a good spot for a fire stop. Now, uh, recall, I'm, you're required to do this every 10 feet by code. I'm doing it every eight. Uh, and so what you could do here is just stick a two by four and block this gap here. You need to cover the insulation. So the idea is, again, if you have an outlet in this wall, it catches fire, it'll melt the insulation back and then the fire can breathe side to side. And so what we're gonna do is use my piece of plywood. Uh, and I'm using plywood just because it's the same material I needed to use for the, for the top uh, fire stop. So it just makes more sense just to buy some extra and do it here. So I'm gonna start by taking my fire expanding foam, fire block foam. So to install the, the fire block, I just need to basically put it against the board. Okay. All right, now to keep it there, I'm just gonna use some construction screws. So I'll go up down here, add a couple more screws. And there's a gap up here between the back of the fire block and where my sill plate is. So that gap up top will need to be filled with fire expanding or the fire blocking foam as well. And then that completes the fire blocking uh, from floor to ceiling. And you definitely want to try to keep this off your hands because it stains terribly. All right. So that is the process we're taking to both insulate and frame up all of our perimeter walls. We get a few more walls left. In our next video, we have to, uh, I'll show you the same process, uh, but for a wall that has a big old uh, pipe on it. Uh, so if you thought this video was helpful, give us a thumbs up and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.